good crime family hope you're having a good day today if not i hope the video bring a little light to your day today ladies and gentlemen we finna check out how good was larry bird actually let's get straight into it larry bird was one of the best players to ever touch a basketball and together with magic johnson Goat, the biggest larry nba Legend. star of the 80s what made him so successful considering he was quite unathletic? And how would he fare in today's NBA? Did he win just because his teams were loaded? And where does he stand among the best shooters of all time? Watch the rest of the video to find out. Let's get it then. A Hick from French Lick. Bird was born into a poor family in French Lick, Indiana, a town of 2,000 inhabitants. Larry grew up a shy, introverted kid who didn't talk much, and he did most oh, wow. of his so talking on a basketball court. He grew up to six foot nine and played at small forward. But with his understanding of basketball, nine, he could play whatever position he wanted. Larry finished his high school career as the best scorer in school's history, and he could choose where he wanted to go to college. He started playing for Bobby Knight at Indiana University, but didn't like the spotlight and being around so many people. He then settled at Indiana State University, where the pressure was much less than with the Hoosiers. Larry averaged 30.3 points, 13.3 rebounds, and 4.6 assists in college. Nice. The Sycamores were invincible in Bird's senior year and became the number one team in the country with a 33 win streak. Their only loss came in the 1979 NCAA Finals, where they played against Michigan State, led by senior guard Urban Johnson. Despite 19 points from Bird, Magic and his teammates celebrated the title in what was the most watched college basketball game in history at the time. Bird was named the So they've been going at it for a minute ever since college basketball. Collegiate Player of the Year, leaving Indiana State as the fifth ranked NCAA scorer of all time. He was already drafted as the Boston Celtics selected him in the NBA draft in 1978, hoping that Bird, who qualified for the NBA Yakum. as a junior, would skip his senior year. He opted to stay in Indiana. And when he finally arrived in Boston, the Celtics looked nothing like their championship selves, with consecutive losing seasons. Mm. Bird then single-handedly caused the biggest turnaround ever seen in the NBA at the time. Boston improved their record from the season before by 32 wins and finished with 61 wins and 21 losses. Although his arch-rival Magic Johnson had an impressive season and won the title with the Lakers, Bird was named the Rookie of the Year with the average of 21.3 points, 10.4 rebounds, and 4.5 assists. Nice. He also made the All-Star team and First Team All-NBA, and even finished fourth in the MVP voting, and proved he could transform a mediocre team into a great one all by himself. A New Green Dynasty After Bird's rookie year, the Celtics had a busy offseason. Legendary Red Auerbach worked his magic and brought two new faces to Boston that would form one of the biggest dynasties in NBA history. Auerbach robbed Golden State by sending them the first and 13th pick in the 1980 draft in exchange for center Robert Parrish and the third pick, which became Kevin McHale. Along with the newly formed Big Three, the Celtics also had an all-star point guard, Nate Tiny Archibald, young and athletic forward Cedric Maxwell, and a few well-integrated role players that made the team complete. The head of the snake was, of course, he, Larry Bird, who was second in MVP voting, en route to a league-leading 62-20 record. The Celtics avenged the loss to the Sixers from the previous year, and after a tough seven-game series in the Eastern Finals, they were in the NBA Finals once again. There nice. they would be met by the Houston Rockets, led by prime Moses Malone, who was arguably the best center in the league at the time. I love the fact that he kind of built his team from scratch. Well, not kind of. He built his team from scratch. And also the team knew, like, it was just like, bro, like, just because you have one great player, like, one great player can't do it all by themselves. They, they need a team, you know? Malone averaged 23 and 16 work. in the series. But the Celtics were too good of a team and would win the title with four games to two. Bird averaged 15 points, 15 rebounds, and seven assists for the series. But the finals MVP went to Cedric Maxwell, who led the Celtics in scoring with 18 points per game. And when everybody already saw the new Green Dynasty, two bad years ensued, despite Bird's all-around excellence and McHale's improvement. They once again were the number one seed in the East. Bird was the All-Star Game MVP, but Philadelphia retaliated for a close defeat in the Eastern Finals. And this time, they won in seven games. Mm. The year after, the Celtics regressed even more, finishing as a third seed and getting swept in the second round by the Milwaukee Bucks. After that, Coach Bill Fitch resigned and was replaced by Casey Jones, who won eight titles in the Bill Russell era as a player. 
The change bore fruit. The team was refreshed with the young shooter Danny Ainge and veteran point guard Dennis Johnson and played the best basketball in the NBA, finishing with a 62-20 record. After three years of coming in second, Larry Bird finally won the regular season MVP with 24.2 nice. points, 10.1 rebounds, and 6.6 .6 assists on average. The Celtics steamrolled to the finals, where a known foe awaited. Magic. It was, of course, Magic and the Lakers. The title was decided in Game 7, where Larry Bird led the Celtics to their 15th NBA title. Bird was named the finals MVP, and he finally had his revenge over Magic, who defeated him in the NCAA Finals of 1979. That's crazy the following season, right there. the Celtics were even better in the regular season. Bird repeated as MVP, and Mikhail repeated as the sixth man of the year. They got to the finals again with the same opponent. After the Celtics won Game 1, 148-114, in a game that was dubbed the Memorial Day Massacre, it seemed like the Celtics were going to dominate the Lakers and repeat as champions. However, the Lakers had other plans, and especially Kareem was determined to defeat the Celtics. Kareem averaged 25.7 points, 9 rebounds, and 5.2 assists in 6 games, on 60% shooting. And the Lakers have finally won the NBA Finals against the Celtics for the first time in nine tries. 1986, Dang. the greatest Celtics nine team tries? ever in the pinnacle of Bird's career. After the Finals loss, Auerbach made another clever move. He traded Cedric Maxwell to the Clippers for Bill Walton, once one of the most talented centers in the league, who accepted the role of a sixth man on the Celtics. While Kevin McHale moved to the starting lineup, the Celtics won 50 out of 51 home games that year, which Jeez. is a record that still stands Holy and likely will never be broken. Larry, That's a crazy record for home. Wow. God dang. Imagine? Bird experienced the absolute peak of his game and basketball brilliance in 85-86. He deservedly won another MVP and became the only player other than Wilt and Bill Russell to win the award in three straight seasons. The 85-86 season birthed several games that proved the endless basketball genius of Larry Bird, and most notable is the left-handed game. Before the game against Portland, Bird surprised left hand gang in the building yo me and larry got a lot of coming you know we both left-handed we both introverts i love it hey larry legend his teammates and journalists by saying that he would shoot the whole game with his left hand because he wanted to motivate that's kind of wild that he was an introvert but he used to talk a lot of trash on the court so that's <laughs> So I'm guessing the court is like his, his comfort zone. Because like me, like being on stage as an artist is my comfort zone. Even though I'm an introvert, I can get on stage in front of thousands and turn up. So I'm guessing when he get on the court, it's like his comfort zone. Motivate himself for a relatively meaningless regular season game. How much did he score? Just 47 points, 14 rebounds, 11 assists with a game-winning shot, and 22 points scored with his left hand out of sheer boredom and fun. And those are the reasons why he was called Larry Legend. Apart from that, he also scored a career-high 60 points on the Atlanta Hawks earlier in the season. Almost everything he put up toward- Wait, so was he left-handed? I mean, I, he just played a game with his left hand just to show he can do both. Interesting. Where the basket went in, and he got into such a zone that the Hawks bench jumped off their chairs and cheered, after which they received hefty penalties from the Hawks coach, Mike Fratello. <laughs> That's still Throughout a wild game, story, bro. The commentator noted that what he was watching was the biggest shooting exhibition in basketball history. And at the time, it truly was. They the must Celtics have didn't want to be on, eight, on their team. In the regular they were trying to get out of the country. just one game in the playoffs <laughs> on their way to the finals. There, they would be greeted by the Twin Towers of Houston, Ralph Sampson and Hakeem Olajuwon, who defeated the Lakers in the West Finals. But nobody could touch the Celtics that season, who were one of the most talented teams ever assembled. Bird was two rebounds and three assists shy of averaging a triple-double in the Finals, and he deservedly won his second Finals MVP. Final years, injuries, and the dream team. In 1987, the Celtics had a very difficult season. Their number two pick, Len Bias, tragically passed away after the draft. Oh, they wow. suffered many injuries during the season and the playoffs. But Larry Bird was too good, and they still advanced to the finals after two seven-game series against the Bucks and the Bad Boy Pistons, where Bird made one of the most legendary plays and stole the inbounds pass from Isaiah Thomas that won a crucial Game 5 for the Celtics. And in the finals again, it was the Lakers for the third time in four years. Because LA was much more rested coming to the finals, 
the Celtics did not have enough gas in the tank to stop the fast-paced showtime. Bird delivered another 24-10-5 for the series, but it wasn't good enough, and Magic got the best of him once again. Next year, Bird had maybe one of the best statistical years of his career. He averaged 30 points on 50, 40, and 90 shooting, a feat he achieved the previous year as well, proving that he's the best shooter who ever played at the time. The Celtics reached God, the conference dude. finals, but it would be their last hurrah as the Pistons finally got over the hump and managed to beat them. In the offseason, Bird sustained a severe back injury from chopping wood back home in Indiana. He was one of the best basketball players in the world who had millions of dollars, but he was still the hick from French Lick. Which chopped his own wood when he needed to, and I respect him even more for that. The respect, back injury respect, and surgery on definitely. both Achilles' tendons caused Jesus. him to miss almost the entire 88-89 season. However, even debilitated, Bird was better than most players in the league, and despite needing to stretch for more than two hours to be able to run, he was still very productive. He was named an All-Star each of the last three seasons. But I also do wonder like how they will perform now, because like the technology is a lot better. They would have been able to keep a lot more healthier body, you know, been able to, like things. I think things would have been, um, I think they could have probably been a, a lot more healthier. Along with some memorable performances, could be wrong, like a though. game in the 1991 playoffs where he suffered a concussion, but then pulled a Willis Jeez. Reed and came back to the game, scored 17 points in the second half, and won the series that. for the Celtics. Unfortunately, the toll on his body was getting too much to bear, and he ended his career in 1992, when he finally became teammates with his good friend Magic Johnson on the Dream Team. To see it. Bird flew off into the sunset with the gold in Barcelona, retiring Holy. as the best small forward and the best shooter to ever play. Legacy trash-talking god, top 10 player ever. Thanks. One of the most famous Larry Bird trash-talking stories is from the 1986 three-point shooting contest when the legend walked into the locker room and asked all the other participants who's coming in second after him. Of course, he went on and switched near every three-pointer and won, all without taking his jacket off. <laughs> Bird would win the three-point shooting competition the next two years as well. And before Reggie Miller came along, there was no argument who's the best shooter ever. On the 26th of December, 1990, Indiana's Reggie Chuck, like the rifleman person, I gotta, I gotta said he's going bird hunting before the Celtics game. Bird replied that he'd got a Christmas present for him, and while Chuck was on the bench, Bird got the ball in the corner just in front of the Pacers' bench. He hit the jump shot, turned to Chuck, and said, Mary F and Christmas. And that's who Larry Bird was, and how he talked. He was the ultimate competitor, and he had all the skills in the world to back it up. He'd tell players where he would get the ball, what he was going to do, and then do it. And there was nothing they could do to stop him. He accused the opposing team of putting a white guy to guard him because he felt that was disrespectful. And if you watch Space Jam, you know that Larry isn't white. He's clear. Bird would drink half the bar under the Wait, table. he was Sometimes in the movie? Fight I don't remember the bar that. Well, and then go to the game <laughs> the so next day and dominate, it. as if nothing happened. Bird was a unique player, and there was nobody like him. At first glance, his moves look almost clumsy, far from physically dominant or athletic. He rarely dunked, his vertical was average at best, and he never played exceptionally fast. From the neck down, in basketball terms, he was nothing special. From the neck up, until the end of his fingertips, he was pure genius. There's no doubt that he would be a great player in today's era, where we can see players like Doncic and Jokic dominate the game without great physical talent. Bird was one of the top 10 players who ever played, and one of the best pure shooters ever. He was the best player in the NBA for almost an entire decade, despite the yeah. brilliance from Magic and the athleticism of Michael Jordan. And like Magic Johnson said, there will never be another Larry Bird. Bro, that had to have been a time to be a, a, a NBA fan. Magic, Jordan, Larry Bird. I mean, I'm not saying we don't have legends now, but jeez. <laughs> you know? But hey, man, um, hope you enjoyed this reaction video, man. Like, this is, I, I, I love watching these videos, man. Like, like I, I, I haven't been the biggest sports fan most of my life, so it's, it's very interesting, you know, just kind of learning basketball and, and learning, like, the, the, the legends that you hear about. Like, I heard about a lot of these, of course, I heard about a lot of these uh, players, but it's like actually seeing it, <laughs> you know, versus, you know, hearing about them. But I um, hope y'all enjoyed my reaction video, man. Stay tuned. Let me know in some comments what other videos y'all want to see me do, and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. Till next time, deuces.